Ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement and I need to address it now. Today marks a new beginning in this entire astrophotography channel in some sense. This will be the first video that I am not taking a picture of a nebula through my telescope, but something different entirely. I'm going after the Whirlpool Galaxy tonight and if you caught that, I said galaxy. Yes, you heard me. I'm going after another galaxy tonight through my telescope, not a nebula. It's going to be like this for the next couple months and I will fill you guys in on everything you need to know about why I'm taking a picture of a bunch of galaxies over this next coming season. So, so stay tuned and I will reveal my image of the Whirlpool Galaxy at the end of this video for you guys to enjoy. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Tanner from the Astro Tan YouTube channel and welcome to the family. Well, I hope you guys heard me well. I'm taking pictures of other galaxies through my telescope now. And sure, I hope you guys have seen the Andromeda Galaxy that I took a picture of. You can check that video out right up here. And to be quite honest, it was an amazing, amazing target. And I love the Andromeda Galaxy. And there's a little bit of some interesting opinions on galaxies and how are we really able to photograph galaxies in the first place? Well, I'm going to be explaining that right now. All right, so basically all the nebulae that you've been seeing on my YouTube channel, all those crazy colors, all that fun stuff, all that reflection nebulae, all that crazy stuff I talk about, that is all stuff inside of our own Milky Way galaxy. And in every galaxy, there is a bunch of nebulae or star forming regions that are star clusters. And there's even something called satellite galaxies, which are galaxies that basically orbit other galaxies, larger ones at least. In our Milky Way galaxy, we have the large and small Magellanic clouds, which are smaller satellite galaxies that are brought towards our own by gravity. And they basically orbit our galaxy itself. They have a lot of nebulae in there too, and they're a lot smaller. But the general gist is that in all of these galaxies there's a bunch of nebulae and when you look at a galaxy that's way farther back in the night sky that is really how we observe them we are seeing galaxies face on as they were millions of years ago and it's cra pretty crazy and they are a lot farther than the nebulae that we see in the night sky if you're talking particularly about most galaxies that people take pictures of during this time in spring galaxies are a lot lot smaller in the night sky but why would they be smaller than the night sky if galaxies are so much bigger and they contain all this nebulae and everything that we see in the night sky, why are galaxies a lot smaller then? Well, to answer that question, galaxies are just simply farther away. That's basically the truth of it. Like I said in the beginning of this video, take for example the Andromeda galaxy, which is only 2.4 million light years away from us. We see it really big in the night sky, six full moons in length to be exact. Or take even the Triangulum galaxy, which is just a little bit farther but it's also a lot bigger in scale. The galaxy that I'm photographing tonight is the Whirlpool Galaxy, and that is 23 million light years away. So, so if you take, for example, that, that will push this galaxy's largeness in the night sky way back and it will appear a lot smaller. But don't get fooled because these galaxies still have all those nebulae that our galaxy does too. So there's just a lot of different galaxies in the night sky. So yeah, galaxies have all their own crazy nebula in the night sky. And just like nebulae, you can isolate those details by using a narrow band filter, which will let all the nebulae colors pass through and reject all of the moonlight and all the street lights, all that stuff that might mess up our images. But the difference between a galaxy and a nebula is actually quite broad. And did you catch that word broad? Yeah, well, galaxies are broadband targets and nebulae are really narrowband targets. Broadband targets are basically what you can relate to galaxies, which are basically targets that emit light in basically all wavelengths. So take, for example, a red nebula. And if that nebula is red, it's more easy to isolate that red color with a filter. In terms of a galaxy, a galaxy will have all those pretty colors if you've seen or looked up a picture of a galaxy. You'll notice they have all those pretty colors and that's because it's a broadband target. And galaxies are a lot harder to find filters to isolate those colors from because they like to match in with the background sky and all the ambient light and stuff. So it's kind of hard to do it from a city area, but it's not impossible if you put in enough exposure time to really break through that ambient light all those crazy lights around you so like i said if you live in a dark sky area you will have a lot better of a shot than comparison to someone who used the same exposure time in a city light polluted area because there is not a lot of light that you need to basically break through in a dark sky area you're getting all of those details with no blockages from any stray light unless you're imaging under the moon don't do that because of this reason tonight i'm shooting this galaxy with no filter and i know that's pretty crazy to assume but i am doing it with 
no filter tonight. So that means I'm not gonna be using my Optolong L Enhance, which is my narrowband filter. I will not be using that at all. So you might think things are gonna get a little bit crazy back here. And there is something that I'm gonna use naturally that will help with getting a good image of the Whirlpool Galaxy tonight and all this ambient light that is just crazy. I need to move somewhere dark, man. I'm gonna be using the most simple solution and the most effective solution to getting a good image of this galaxy under some light polluted skies, and that is to image on a new moon or when the moon is just not out. The moon, as you know, makes the sky a lot brighter and it is just not good for us astrophotographers. We hate the moon sometimes, and if you're a planetary astrophotographer, you must love the moon, but it's kind of a love-hate relationship for me. So more of a hate relationship, but it's okay. With that moon being gone and making that sky a lot darker, it's gonna be a lot easier to get some details on this Whirlpool galaxy tonight. So I'm really hoping I'll get a lot of good details and galaxies look a lot different than nebulae. So, so we're gonna hope that things are good tonight. There is even another catch to galaxies and that is that you can also use them with a narrowband filter and here's why. So I said before that you can use a narrowband filter to reveal a lot of nebula details in a lot of nebula deep sky targets. I told you that galaxies have all these nebulae inside of them, but did you know that you can see nebulae in faraway galaxies too? Even though they don't look as detailed, there are little sprinkles of nebulae in some really big galaxies like the Triangulum Galaxy, which has huge nebulae emissions, and even the Whirlpool Galaxy, which I'm gonna be taking a picture of tonight, has a lot of crazy nebula inside of it, but unfortunately, I won't be grabbing any of that tonight. I'm gonna be seeing it in all of its natural color, so you'll see a natural color image, what this galaxy really looks like in full color. Some astrophotographers will combine these together. They'll take an image of this galaxy with a narrowband filter, which will block everything else out, all the natural light, and it'll only show the nebulae that are in the galaxy. And then they'll combine it with the broadband part. It'll be a combination of natural and narrowband imaging. Put it all together and it'll be a really cool image. And I've done it a couple times, but I need to get better at it. So tonight I'm only gonna stick with the natural light. So we'll be okay. The Whirlpool Galaxy is a grand design spiral galaxy located in the constellation of Canes Venetici. It's roughly 23 to 31 million light years away, and it is actually a pretty nice, bright, beginner-friendly target. Putting that into simple words, it's nice and bright in the sky, not hard to find, and it will give you some good results in a short amount of time and really any person with a camera and lens can take a picture of this. If you're looking for this galaxy, make sure you're in the season of the Big Dipper and you're gonna look a little bit closer to the Big Dipper and eventually you'll find the Whirlpool Galaxy not too far away from that bear. I don't really understand the constellation of Canes Venetici. It kind of looks a little strange. I don't know why they wouldn't just put it in the Big Dipper, but it's whatever. I don't make the rules around here. I just take the pictures. I'm gonna be taking a picture of this over the next Dude, there are a bunch of dogs barking over there. Somebody's in trouble. I'm gonna be spending the next couple nights shooting this target and I'm gonna hopefully grab maybe about 20 hours of exposure time. And if you're asking, it's a little bit crazy because my sky is completely unobstructed. So that's the reason why. But also the Whirlpool Galaxy is up pretty much all night now. And, and let me explain that. It is officially March, and that marks the soon to be called galaxy season for astrophotographers. As explained in my last video, this explains how the Milky Way is basically down for the season of spring, and all the galaxies are rising in the night sky, and there are a ton of them. Because the Milky Way is basically gone in the night sky, that reveals all of the outside universe, and that's why there's so many galaxies in the night sky to take pictures of, in this season of spring. While most people with wide field setups don't really like galaxy season, I'm one of those people that are a little bit different and I do like galaxy season even though I have a wide field setup. I'm a little weird sometimes. There's a lot of wide field galaxy targets that you can take pictures of like the Leo triplet which are pretty big targets or you can even shoot some galaxy clusters which will be really nice if you have a wide field setup you can get a lot of galaxies in one picture. But tonight I'm just going after the Whirlpool Galaxy and that's the only thing that I'm really focused on tonight. So we're gonna hope that everything goes well. I'm using the same setup as I normally use, which is the Ioptron GEM28. That is my tracking mount and I have the SV Boney SV503. It is a wide field telescope, but it's gonna be just fine for taking a picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy. I'm using my Player One Artemis C Pro, which will give me reduced noise and a lot of a smoother image because it's a dedicated astronomy camera 
camera. I'm using my ZWO ASI 120MC guide camera, which will help track those stars and make sure my guiding and all my tracking accuracies on my mount will be completely fine. We don't want those star trails, do we? And last but not least, I'm gonna be using my SV Boney guide scope on the top to help assist with that. I forgot to mention one thing. Like I said, this is completely unfiltered. No filters, none, none, no filters, none, no, no. Oh, you guys don't have to mention it. I know y'all noticed I was wearing the Cherry Springs merch. Hey, you better go. Well, it is like 58 degrees out here. The birds are chirping and I am super excited because that means spring is coming. And you know guys know I already love galaxy season, but I'm sick of wearing sweatshirts every single day. I'm sick of being cold, freezing in my room because I just, I just don't, I'm just done with winter at this point. Orion is starting to set earlier and earlier by the day, and it's really starting to become hard to put long projects into Orion because it just keeps on setting. So, so I pulled the trigger, and now I'm gonna start taking pictures of galaxies for the next couple of months. So I hope you guys enjoy those because it's a little bit of a shift from taking pictures of nebulae. But I love it, and I hope you guys will love it too. All right, well, let's get rolling with it. Just gotta wait for the sun to come down. I feel like that's how I end every single daytime recording, but let's go for it. back ladies and gents it is nighttime now let's see what the time is time check is 10:06 p.m. and we are imaging the Whirlpool galaxy right now and I'm super excited because this is the first galaxy that I'll be shooting for galaxy season plan tonight is 180 second exposure so that's three minute exposures and no filter like I said before and it should give us a nice natural image I'm hoping to really grab those star colors that's really my goal for this image I want to get some good star colors because I've always admired the star colors in a lot of my images but since I use narrowband filters most of the time which basically blocks out a lot of the light from stars the natural light at least it kind of makes stars look a little funky in my narrowband images so I kind of have to keep them basic white color but with no filter we have all that freedom in the world to get all those cool little star colors. So. Well, Orion is still in the sky right now and it will be setting pretty soon, basically waving goodbye to us as we transition into spring, which is to the left of me. And I say to the left of me because that's where all the constellations from spring are. I can see Leo up there right now. There's a lot of goodies in Leo, like the Leo triplet. That's a triplet of three galaxies. So. I'll definitely be shooting that soon. Guys, if you stayed and stuck around for the end, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And make sure you subscribe for more and join the Astro Tan family. We are almost to 1K, so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me every single video. And I think it's time to show you guys the image of the Whirlpool Galaxy. So I'll catch you guys later in the next one. Clear skies. That was awesome.